Hi everyone, what's up? Josh here with the DF83 Coffee Tech Grinder. You might also know it as the Giotto or the Turing Grinder. And they made headlines with the DF64 Grinder. And now... <laughs> That's not a knife. That's a knife. The DF83, much like the DF64, very similar workflow and looks. But it does bring with it some learning curves from the original DF64 run of grinders. Because I think we're up to like version 4 of that grinder at the moment. And on the one hand, you've got grinders that had to be modded to be really great grinders. And then on the other hand there, you've got a company who actually listens and is quick to resolve these issues to bring out newer versions. And I say all of this because in testing the DF83, those small concerns I had with the original run of DS64s seems all but gone in this first run of a monster grinder that is the DF83. These design improvements from the DF64 include no longer a vinyl wrapped aluminium body. The body of the DF83 is a high quality metal body painted black or white. And around the body, the grinder's button has moved from underneath the catch cup to around the side of the grinder on a thicker base for better stability. Although the grinder does still spin a lot underneath that torque when it's turned on. And you also have a longer grind chute, which extends closer down towards the catch cup. And you now have an adjustment indicator, which is removable, but this also helps you zero in on the settings that you want and also change your zero point. Used to be an aftermarket part, but now it's shipped standard on all DF83 grinders. Included up top is a better bellow system. Now this has an inbuilt anti-popcorn shape to it, and this limits the amount of popcorning that happens inside the grinds chamber, where previously this was a concern on the DF64. The bellows itself, it's a little shorter, and you don't get that same pressure like you do on the DF64. However, with bigger burrs and a bigger motor, I found this does alleviate some of the causal effects of retention you do get on the DF64. Now, as far as retention on the DF83 is concerned, it's not going to win any prizes. However, it is consistent and reliable when using the RTD method and the bellows. You can expect a 0.2 to 0.4 gram fluctuation in your dose after that initial loss of around one to two grams to the bird chamber. And in terms of cleanliness, well, it's really the same story. So long as you're using the RTD method, you'll avoid a lot of the static that tends to create clouds of grounds sticking to the outside of the grind chute. And you get a bunch of other accessories which you didn't before, like an extender to the catch cup, which really acts like a dosing ring as well. And this works to minimize any grounds from flying out in using the catch cup. When grinding straight into a portafilter, it does a decent job of this, though when sitting on the portafilter, it does slide into the sides of the basket, leaving grooves around the outside of the coffee. So as dosing rings go, it is a small part, but hopefully this is something that Coffee Tech would be willing to fix on newer models. Then you have that catch cup riser, which was popularized with the DF64. It's now made of a flexible silicon rather than 3D printed plastics, which is a nice touch as it's less scratchy and much easier to place the catch cup into the riser. Now you also get a grinder brush and an atomizer for RDTing your beans when single dosing. And they're fairly small, inexpensive details, but it means if you haven't already got all of this gear, then jumping straight into something like a DF83 means you're gonna get the best out of it. And I do think you want to be RDTing with this grinder, especially when single dosing. Now, I make a point of single dosing because that's essentially what this grinder is maximized for with a 50 gram capacity hopper. Except when you now use the included hopper that comes with the DF83 that holds 250 grams. Now this is not blasphemy. This is a real commercial advantage for two very specific reasons. And you're able to remove the forks off of the DF83 and then begin grinding retail bags of beans of 250 grams up to 500 grams at a time, which makes this quite an affordable deli grinder. And also thinking, say, in a brew bar scenario where you're using a Fetco or a Mock Master in larger doses or even cold brewing. So there are aspects to the DF83 that suit both you, the home coffee enthusiast, and you, the specialty coffee owner, quite equally. It's not loud. It's really fast at grinding. Let's just demonstrate that now, shall we? 20 gram dose on an espresso setting. Right, put the little catch cup holder on there.
Not too loud at all. It's a straightforward grinder to use, and it's easy to keep clean and has low retention. Though, it does come with that aspect of having to align the burrs. However, if you are going down that track of large flat burr grinders anyway, this is pretty well unavoidable. And the DF83 uses what's known as a wave spring washer for the top burr carrier, as opposed to individual springs found on the narrower DF64. This makes taking the top burrs on and off much smoother to do. Now, it doesn't improve the alignment at all. That is something you still need to follow through with manually, but it helps with overall user experience, with maintenance, and taking that collar on and off. Now, the burrs. These are an 83 mil stainless steel burr, and quite a standard burr set, rotating at 1400 RPMs behind a 550 watt motor. So, there is some heft to this grinder. Not unlike a Malcone GK43, which is another beast in its own right. That uses 98 mil burrs and a 1200 watt motor. So comparing a DF83 to an EK43, well, there is still a bit of a gap and price points are like unreasonable. I don't unfortunately have an EK43 grinder handy today for that taste comparison. However, I do have three DF64s behind me. One standard and two fitted with SSP burrs. And I've been doing some testing for a future video on DF64s and burrs. So I'm gonna incorporate these grinders for an espresso and a filter blind taste. And what I wanna do here is see just how a standard 83 mil burr set stacks up against 64 mil burrs in a few categories. And that's really the talking point, isn't it? of any new grinder is what's that flavor profile like and how does it compare against other grinders? So let me kind of set all this up, come back with the results. Let's jump into it. All right, four espressos, two different grinders, four different burr sets. Four messes on the bench. Interesting times dialing in these grinders, interesting. Let's just uh, stir these up for a second. Uh, I'll spin them around so I don't know which espresso is which and then we'll come back and we'll chat a little bit more. All right, that's enough time. Keep that handy. Gotta drink water when you're drinking this much espresso. All right, so we've got somewhere along this lineup, DF64 standard burrs, a DF64 with SSP Red Speed espresso burrs, a DF64 with SSP multi-purpose burrs and the DF83 with standard burrs. Dialing in these grinders, I was really interesting. The standard burrs on the DF83 and the standard DF64, really easy to dial in, in fact. Like, they seem to be so much more forgiving than the SSP burrs. Like, they're just forgiving. You can find it quite easy. Like the, the movement between grind settings isn't such a dramatic change. Whereas when it came to multi-purpose wasn't too bad. It seemed like with the uh, with higher quality, as the quality of the burr increased, such as with the SSP Red Speed Espresso burrs, the knife edge increased. The sharpness of that knife edge. So when I found the right grind setting, well, it took a while to find the right grind setting anything kind of left or right of that grind setting, ran too fast or ran too slow. So that perhaps that like that knife edge, that seems right to me. Like you just get that perfect setting that you need uh, and, and anything left or right of that doesn't seem to appear right. Whereas these are more forgiving. Like there's it seems to be more of an, a, a range that you can go between, but it's hard to find that perfect one between that range. You're kind of like playing within that range the whole time. Whereas a better quality burr, you're going to find, it, it might take you a while to dial in that perfect recipe or that perfect uh, uh, dialing in of an espresso. But once you find it, like there's no other. That's the one that you want. That's my experience anyway, especially just between these three side by side so, so far. Time to taste the espressos. This is gonna be interesting. All right, so, just a little bit of background on this espresso. It's an Ethiopian coffee, tasting notes of mandarin, blackberry, and vanilla custard. It's a natural coffee. So it should be full bodied, but with you know some citrus, some, some fruitier notes punching through. I like that. 
It is, it's rich, full bodied. There's definitely that like mandarin coming through, but maybe with a little bit of peel. It's a bit, yeah, it's heavy, it's rich, it's lingering. That's good. All right. Good start. Wow. Much, much sweeter, like clean, like wow, like the texture on this is like, there's barely any texture in this. It's super sweet right up front. No hint of like peel or bitterness at all, just delicious. Equally delicious, stands up probably in like a milk-based drink. This is like the espresso of it, wow. Just the, just the contrast between those two espressos is impressive. Wow, that's enjoyable, that that's kind of sits in between, but it has its own highlights. Not as much sweetness, body texture. There's more creaminess in this one than there is in the bright one. So it has, the, it has like the attributes of all of these past two. I mean like all of this coffee I'm probably going to enjoy. It's dialed in, it's delicious Ethiopian coffee. But this seems to share across the attributes of those last two that I just tasted. And probably a more enjoyable aftertaste too even. It's like, let's rearrange these in order of brightness to body. So full bright, full sweet, full acidity. We've got this one, which adds more texture, just slightly adds more texture. It's got almost the amount of brightness and, and flavor clarity, uh, flavor fidelity as this one does. This is good, this is really tasty. Then I think this was the full bodied one. So we're gonna go this one again and this one. So full bright, acidity, clarity, fidelity, delicious as a fruit cup. This just adds a little bit of texture to it but it still kind of maintains the acidity and the brightness in the cup. Possibly my favorite cup, sitting on that one. Uh, creaminess, the next cup, creaminess, sweetness, still there, kind of had the, the top and the tail of each end. This one kind of like is the all rounder, I suppose. And then this one is, yeah, just heaviness, just rich, full bodied, way more than these three interesting because you know like if i was to look at it and be like this one is completely different to these three well i would suggest then that this full body like heavy rich espresso which stands out from all these three completely would be the df83 that's just my guess now because it just seems that way split between three and one what these are i have no idea now all this coffee was RDT'd, WDT'd, distributed, tamped, and got within two seconds of each other. So really happy with how each of these espressos ran. Let's see, let's see. Like I said, this, is, this has to be the DF83. That's just my feel. If it is, it's gonna have a yellow dot underneath it. Ha, huh, completely wrong there. That's a red dot. Wow. There you go, red dot. Wow. This was the uh, red speed. This was the DF64 Red Speed Espressos, which seems to like confuse me a little bit, but not, I guess, perhaps just uh, with that full bodiness. Didn't quite get the recipe right for it, even though the recipe worked for these three. This one just maybe tad, nah. Because of the bitterness, I mentioned the bitterness. Maybe it's just that over extraction. You've got to kind of adjust your recipe to the burrs. Like I said, it was, it was the most difficult to dial in too, like to get that, that uh, setting right, there it is. Now, if I was to try and guess which one was the DF83 out of these three, probably the next, probably the next one down, yellow. Nope, white, wow. All right, so red, white, blue, yellow, yellow. Wrong again. I'm happy to be wrong. It was the all-rounder. No, it wasn't the all-rounder. It was the one that was just as sweet as the sweetest and the brightest, but with a little bit more texture. Hmm, interesting. All right, well that's espresso for you. Let's roll on up and do a filter tasting. So what I've got here is the four samples, the four grinders ground. I haven't put water on them yet. It's gonna be like a cupping as a blind tasting, but they've all been ground. I've crew sifted them previous to that as well. Now I haven't used those samples, I've used newer samples, but I've used the crew sifter to get the grind settings as close as possible. So it's a nice split between um, micron sizes of above 900, between 900 and 400, and those fines below 400. So they're all pretty well similar in their splits. 
which means hopefully their grind settings and on the cupping table, they're as close as they can be uh, and see, see what I get in terms of flavor profiles that way. Uh, like I said, they're all ground right here in front of me. Um, totally confused as to which sample is which. Just gonna put them on the table now and pour water into them and then cup them after they cool down. Let's see how we go. All right, so we're coming up to like 15 minutes now. I've passed through about three or four times. I think I'm just gonna pass through a couple more times, but I'm already seeing a pattern with the acidity and sweetness versus the contrast in the body and the creaminess of the coffees like we did in the espresso round, which is really interesting. And it would be really cool to see if the same pattern followed through. Whereas I've got this really bright, juicy, a lot of fidelity in this coffee right here with the flavor notes and it just moves ever so slightly with more texture and more creaminess and less acidity and sweetness to this end cup. So it's almost as if I'm looking at the espresso round in the filter, in the filter coffees here. But I'll let these cool down a little bit more, taste them a little bit more and, and, and see if anything kind of jumps out as they cool down. That's enough slurping and sipping. That was really close, by the way. Well, close and not close. Like, uh, I feel like, again, there's kind of like three that are sitting very similar and one that's not. Not that that really helped me last time because I thought the three were the uh, DF64s and the one was the DF83. Uh, but uh, perhaps, again, it's the same pattern, you know? Maybe, uh, maybe this is the SSP burrs and these are the rest. Let's just go with that. Like, I really don't have a clue right now. So I'm just gonna go with what I know and what I've just experienced. So this should be red, red, white, and blue. It is indeed red. Amazing, that's incredible. Um, yeah, really interesting. I think uh, it probably goes to show perhaps it's just the recipe, the red speed burrs for espresso. It's just like a knife edge, man, like too fine or too coarse and you're gonna really affect the extraction of the coffee. That's just heavy bodied. Uh, a little bit more creaminess, a little bit more richness in the espresso burrs. Interesting. For these three, maybe the same again, if that's already proven to be the red. So I think what we went last time was red, white, this was yellow, and then that was blue. Like it went boom, boom, back and forwards. So red, white. No, that's blue. That's still yellow though, so that's in the right position. All right, so the yellow remains kind of like the all-rounder. The DF83 is the all-rounder. It has this, this, which one was this one? White. Multi-purpose. That's really interesting. So the multi-purpose had the most brightness and acidity for that filter coffee. Uh, standard DF64 burrs, excuse me, the standard DF64 burrs, well, edged a little bit towards, it still had a lot of uh, brightness in the city, but it, it started to get a little bit creamy. It creamed up a little bit and was, uh, had a little bit more body and texture in it. And this was the all rounder. I'm just gonna do one more pass. Yeah. All rounder has just, just enough body to be enjoyable, but not too much that it takes away from any of the acidity or sweetness, which is fantastic. And then was the, SSP Red Speed Burst. Now I'm really fascinated by these because it just hasn't proven, I, I expected like high fidelity, really sweet. I thought it was gonna be at this end, especially for espresso, maybe not for, for filter especially, but obviously multi-purpose burst set comes in strong with that one. No winners out of these, but the DF83, really consistent, interesting. As mentioned earlier on in this video, how Coffee Tech and the companies supporting them, they're entrenched in continuous improvements of their products like the DF64. And literally, literally as I was making this video, I was contacted by our supplier and they wanted to inform me that the Australian and the New Zealand models of the Coffee Tech 83 will further include extras as standard, like a new dial indicator that will increase the range dramatically past 90 and then use the full circumference to be able to adjust the grind size coarser and also track it much easier. Additionally, along with this, 
an upgraded burr set. From the stainless steel to a DLC diamond-like coating burrs, this is gonna make a huge improvement, along with burr alignment straight out of the box, which is a huge plus and honestly great news for anyone within the Australian and the New Zealand network being able to buy this DF83 grinder, as I think it will just further improve what is, from my tests, an awesome grinder for filter and espresso. So if you have any further questions on the DF83, add them in the comment section down below and we'll get straight back to you. Stay tuned for the burr testing of the DF64 and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.